Hey everyone, Chris Friesen with Shotlist Films, and welcome to my space scene tutorial. Okay, so we're going to start by creating a new comp. We'll make it 1920 by 1080. One minute long is fine for now, and hit OK. Now create another composition and make it 10,000 pixels wide by 5,000 pixels high. You can have it smaller if you want, but I find this gives nice results. Just make sure the height is half the size of the width, and we'll call this comp stars. Now create a new solid, and also call it stars. Come over here and type in fractal. Choose fractal noise, double click to apply. Now let's drop down the transform and bring the scale way down, something like two, no, maybe three. Now let's type in curves, apply that, and we'll really contrast it up. I'll zoom in to see what's happening. Okay, so now we'll duplicate the layer, Command or Control D, shut off curves, and reset the fractal noise. Now I'm going to press G for the pen tool. Create a shape something like this. I'll press F for feather, and we'll try 255. Mm, way too little. How about 700? It's better. I'm going to go back into the fractal noise and increase the scale to something like 255. And it makes it a little more cloud like. Now we'll apply toner and make it a red color. Not too saturated since I don't want it to be too bright. And we'll drop the opacity a bit. Okay, so now we're going to go back into the first comp and drag the stars comp in. I'll come over here and we'll type in CC environment. Apply that. And to make this work, we're going to need to add a camera. So we'll go layer, new, camera. And we'll make it 35 mil. Hit OK. Now if we select the camera by pressing C, we can pan around the scene. If you scale down the layer, you'll get more distortion on the edges, like a wider angle lens. I'm just going to scale it back up a little bit though. Now we're going to create a new solid and call it Element. We'll apply that. We'll go into uh, Scene Setup. Go over here to the Starter Pack Physical. We're going to use the physical shaders in Element 3D version 2. Click once on each of the rocks and add them to the scene. Shift click on the rocks and drag them out of the group. And you can delete the group folder and hit OK. And drop down Group 1, go into Particle Replicator, and change that to a 3D Grid. Turn up the scale shape, and we can increase the number for the X, Y, and Z. All these parameters will change by the time we're done here. We're kind of off center here, so I'm going to go to the camera, right click, transform, and reset. And to randomize it a bit, Let's go into the particle look and adjust the size random. Then we'll go into the replicator effects, drop down scatter, and increase that quite a bit to 155 or so. Now under particle look, let's drop down the particle rotation. We can adjust rotation random. We can add an expression, alt click the stopwatch, and come down here and type time times 55. That way they just continue rotating throughout the animation. Now let's light our Element 3D rocks. Drop down render settings and lighting and drop down to the preset dark. This actually worked really nicely. I already like the, the angle of the lights hitting the rocks. If you want to adjust the lighting a little, we can go into the physical environment and adjust the exposure. 
And if you want to rotate the lighting, yeah, you could go into lighting, additional lighting, rotation. We're okay here, so I'm not going to worry about that. But now, let's add some cool volumetric lighting. We'll go back into the space comp, duplicate our top layer, and shrink it down. We can change the transfer mode to add. Also turn the opacity back up to 100%. And uh, we'll go back to the comp. Here's what it looks like. Uh, to add the light beams, we'll create an adjustment layer. Come in here and type in radio fast blur. And turn up the amount. Change the adjustment layer's transfer mode to screen. Now let's type in curves. Apply that. But put it before the radio fast blur. And push the shadows way down. This makes the radial effect only affect the brighter pixels. I also changed the zoom level on the radial fast blur to the brightest. Let's go back into the star comp and brighten the top layer by applying some curves. I'll feather a little bit more to get a softer transition with the effect. But since the highlight edges on our rocks are too bright and affecting the volumetric light, we can apply curves to knock down their brightness. So because the radial fast blur isn't a 3D effect, it doesn't move properly with the camera. Uh, a trick I picked up from Video Copilot's advanced 3D light rays was how to parent the effect to a 3D null. I can put the link to that tutorial in the description. Go to Layer, New, Null Object, and make that a 3D Null. Just to stay organized, rename the adjustment layer to Light Beams. I'll Alt-click on the Radio Fast Blur Center Stopwatch. Now don't click anything, just grab the Pick Whip and drag it to the Null and let go. Now, at the end here, type in dot two .comp, parentheses, end bracket, 0 comma 0 comma 0 end bracket parentheses just like this now click away if we select the null the light beams should be parented to it since we can assume the light source is really stinking far away we can push the null object way back there you can increase the scale to make it uh, more visible pressing shift also makes it move faster so now if we move the camera, it looks a little more natural. I still don't think it's bright enough, so I'm going to come back in and shrink it down a bit and crank up the brightness. Let's see what that looks like. So after a little trial and error, I actually scaled it back up, but left it nice and bright. So we're just about ready to animate, but we'll add a little more interest to the star comp. I'll come in here and I'll duplicate my cloud layer and expand the mask edges out. Just not past the edges because it'll wrap more seamlessly for the CC environment effect. Once I've done that, I'll come over and change the toner color to a greenish blue. We'll apply a vector blur, set that to around 55. and drop the layer's opacity a little. To make sure we really get our light beams from our hotspot, I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and put it below the top bright layer, but above everything else. Apply curves and darken everything but the hotspot. So now I went ahead and keyframed a basic camera move, pushing in slightly and rotating on the Z axis. But now I wanna have the camera pan towards the light and watch the rocks moving in that direction. I'll set a keyframe for the Y rotation and move to the end of the animation since that's where I want to be the final position. And now I'll adjust the Y rotation and turn away from the light source which shows our blue space background. Color's a little dull so I'm just going to come in and apply Vibrance to turn that up. 
adds a little saturation without overdoing it. So I want these rocks to fly past the camera, so we need to expand the replicator shape. This will take a little trial and error. I'm going to go to the start position in the animation and play with those settings. I'll keep trying higher values until those rocks show up. So we're starting to see them now. It looks like we have some light beam effects happening here. I'll just quickly adjust the curves on the light beam effect. So now the rocks are much further apart, so we can go and increase those numbers. We can also bring up the particle size. Let's just check some random sections on that too. Now I'm going to go under Group Utilities and create a Group Null. I can use this to push around all the objects in that group together. So let's set a keyframe at the end of the animation and push these away from the camera. And now we'll go to the beginning of the animation. Actually, we'll go where we can see them so we can pull them back away from the light. Now we'll go to the first frame and drag the keyframe back to the first frame. To get a smoother camera move, I'll select the keyframes and press F9 for easy ease. And we'll do a RAM preview. I'm skipping every second frame here to speed it up a little bit. Oh, and right there, that's perfect. Having this uh, rock swoop right past the camera adds a lot of interest to the shot. I was just going to keep tweaking until something like this happened, but sometimes you just luck out. Actually, that never happens. It makes me worry something's going to go... <laughs> so now, let's make the rocks match the scene a little better. I'll go to the element layer and adjust the curves, go into the red channel and boost that, bring down the green channel and drop that down. To finish it off, we'll add an adjustment layer, call it vignette, apply curves, go up here and select the eclipse mask, double click that, go down and check inverted, and I'll press F for feather and set that to about 355. Well that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. I'll have the project files in a link below. You'll need Element 3D version 2. It might open with version 1, but you'll need to tweak the lighting since version 1 doesn't have the physical shaders. Uh, download the scene and play around with it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos and please subscribe. Thanks again.